What is up guys? My name is Mark Samuel. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the RC vlog. I got a cool vlog for you guys today, but before we go on to what the vlog is actually about, we're gonna open up the whole package. Packages I got this week. I got two packages this week. Uh, one of them I already opened, but I'm gonna act like I haven't opened it yet. And the other I just got today. This one's from A-Main. Um, I'm not expecting anything super cool. I mean, every RC package is super cool, but this is pretty much just restocking on some of the stuff that I already had that I used. But I'll show you what's in here. Let's see what we got. Oh, God. Oh, good. All right, so. Interesting. All right. We got two of these. These are, wow, these are nice. These are the ProTech tool pouches. I love these tool pouches. These are awesome. I bought two of them because I'm a psycho, because I feel like I have to have two of everything, but this is the one that I use every day. This is the one I take to the track. This is the tool set that I take with my boys whenever me and my boys go bashing. And I have a whole bunch more tool sets. I have at least two more tool sets. So I bought a couple of these bags. This is probably one of my most favorite Get some scissors here. My most favorite products from ProTech. I don't know why. It's little things like this that I really appreciate. But I'll show you something that's kind of cool about this. First off, I noticed that this is not stitched on. So this is an older older bag. This is all stitched on here. Um, this is the newer bag not stitched on. That's uh, interesting. Uh, I don't know which one I like better. I feel like maybe the not stitched on might be a little bit cleaner looking, but... The stitched on is cool too. This is what it looks like inside. Um, very cool bags. Super excited about those. I got more tool sets. I want to. I want to actually make it a complete tool set because I got tools everywhere. So that's the first thing in here. Put this up. And then I have these. These are I use these. These are the buggy bags. So I have one for my A scale buggy. I bought two of them for. I bought two of them for uh, for ten scale buggy because I will be running ten scale buggy soon. But this is the defining moment. Will these fit the ten scale truck, the four wheel drive the ET four ten? So let's open one up and find out. Opening. Uh, my initial thoughts is it will. Looks like it will. Um, this just makes it really cool whenever you travel. Your cars are nice and covered. I don't know. I think they look cool. Again, I appreciate little things like this. My truck. Told you guys I was done. Look at all that carbon fiber. Oh, it looks good. Still got to mount the electronics. That's hopefully going to be recorded in the vlog today. Let's see if it fits. Oh, it fits, my friends. It fits. So, the ET410 will fit. And, oh, look how nice, nicely put in there it is. I'm really happy with that one. That one's awesome. I mean, it fits nice, perfectly in there. It's not moving around too much. Very nice, excited about that. That's gonna be a cool one. I'll go ahead and put that up there like that because that looks really cool. It will fit these 10 scale buggy bags, Protect 10 scale buggy bags, it will fit the ET410. Um, buy them, they're freaking awesome. Again, I have them for my, e my Nitro buggy, my E-buggy, got them for all my stuff. They don't make a short course of one, otherwise I'd have one of those. Oh, I do have a couple more things in here. Um, I got ProTech servo gears. This is for the 150T that I'm running my e-buggy. I noticed it was already getting jitters. Um, I'm running the no servo horn uh, trick on my EB4 48.4. Golly, lots of lots of different cars and numbers. But I noticed that my servo was getting jitters, so I bought some servo gears. And then I bought a, this is actually the pinion for 32 pitch, yep, 32 pitch 22. This is the pinion for my ET410. So I had a pinion for my ET410, but what I had is I had, I don't know who makes it, Yeah Racing or something, um, NDRC World had them, but it had the bigger, I guess they had the five millimeter shaft hole for it. God, it sounds so bad. These are some really bad out of context. So it had the five millimeter shaft hole for it so that you could run like a big, like a uh, four pole motor on it. So in order to get those pinions work that I already had, you had to put a shaft collar on your motor and then put the pinion on. 
I ordered one of these from A Main um, because Indy didn't have it. Obviously, I would have bought this from Indy because it's the smaller shaft. Don't know what the the size of that shaft is. Maybe three millimeter shaft. It's a smaller shaft with 32 pitch and the tooth kind of needed. So that's what I got from that. So let's move on to why I'm actually having this vlog today. All right. So moving on to the real reason for this vlog. Which was to talk about, sorry, I'm thirsty guys. To talk about something that you see the Techno drivers have. And that is this secret silver rear shock tower. So have you ever been to big races and you notice the big top drivers and a lot of the uh, Techno team drivers on their Technos, they have this weird silver, looks like a homemade silver shock tower. So I told you I got a couple of package. This package actually houses the DOD upgraded rear shock tower for the NB48.4 and the EB48.4. So before I go on to what it actually does to your car and why people have this shock tower, I'm going to tell you guys that today, for watching this vlog, you're going to be able to get a discount on this shock tower through DO Design. So if you go to Dutch Oven, designs.com www.dutchovendesigns.com and you put in the coupon code below that I'm going to post in the description below you guys will save 5% which I know it's just 5% but it's 5% and you guys will be able to order this rear shock tower this rear shock tower I've actually heard and again allegedly I haven't seen this that people when they put this shock tower on they've actually cut a second off their lap granted that's based on whatever track they're running but Verbatim, I heard that, that people were a second faster per lap with this shock tower. So, I bought one, and we're going to open it up, and we're going to compare it to the existing shock tower. And I'll, I'll tell you why this shock tower is so great first. So, what this shock tower does is it actually adds more options for your camber links here at the bottom. So, by adding more options, so it looks like your, shock, your, your stock shock tower which I'll pull it off my car, will have just these first two rows. Um, this one adds two more rows outside. So what this enables you to do, enables you to run a shorter camber link in the rear. Shorter camber link in the rear is good because what that does is it loosens the rear end and corners. Um, some people have had complaints. Um, I, won't say they're, I won't say they're complaints, but let's, you know, let's spin this a positive way. The reason why the EB and the NB48 cars are so easy to drive is because they're stable. Like, it's hard to lose control in them. And the reason why they're so stable is because the rear end is locked in really good. Well, sometimes you need a car to be a little loose to go really fast. And you want your car to rotate a little bit faster. So by these, these uh, additional holes on the outside, it will allow you to run shorter camber links and make you be able to rotate faster. And the reason why you rotate faster is about camber gain. So here's where I'm going to get fact checked. But it's not at night. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try my best to get this right. So with the shorter camber link, you have more camber gain. So when your, your, your car compresses, when your suspension compresses, your camber gain, it gains more camber as your car compresses. And when you gain more camber, you have less contact patch on the track. So with that said, since you have less contact patch, it's going to have a little bit less traction in the rear. It's going to cause it to be able to rotate a little bit more. The reason why it's so locked in on the... the the stock shock towers, again, you're running a longer camber link and it's not allowing enough camber gain. And when it has so much camber gain, obviously it locks your end, it pushes maybe a little bit. And then even worse, if there's not enough camber gain and your car is leaning, it will catch the edge of your tire and that's what you'll hear people say, my car was edgy. So the rear shock tower, it's a great shock tower. For a while, you had to know somebody to be able to get this thing. I think they, sh they sold it at a lot of the big races, I don't know the guy's name. Um, I, they told me before, but there was another guy who was selling it. But Dutch Oven Design, sponsor of my 2019 program, they have this shock tower now. So go buy this shock tower. They're going to stop producing them um, soon. They're limited quantities. You want to go do it now. Again, with the coupon code in the description below, you can get 5% off. And it's www, obviously, DutchOvenDesigns.com. Go buy it you get a discount today. So let me take this off. Uh, you guys saw that I had a broken car in the last vlog. 
You have no idea how hard it was for me to sit there with a broken car, but I knew that I was gonna have to put this rear shock tower anyways. So I have to move my camera links around anyways. Let's get this off and we'll compare shock towers. So let's do this. Got shock towers off or got these shock tower off we're gonna put them side by side and we're gonna compare them and you guys will see that the only real difference this is them side by side is these camber link positions the top geometry all the same again the stock one has the two let's see if you can see that the two inside rows the new one does has extra camber link positions so exactly the same nothing with the geometry of the the top of the shock tower or the the shock hey, got stuff on me dirt on me um shock position nothing like that just those rear camber links that's what's making it happen so this shock tower actually looks pretty good here they are compared side by side i've seen this shock tower several times i've seen the one that's not dod and this is a dod one this one looks like it's just machined with precision it looks really really good the other one um it doesn't look as aesthetically pleasing as this one but it serves the purpose and it's pretty much the same thing so the two shock towers side by side there you go i'm gonna install it that way i don't leave you guys with a vlog where i'm not actually done I have to do some finagling with my actually I'm not sure how I'm gonna run it I think the way I'm gonna run it is I'm gonna run it all the way on the outside on the tower and then I'm gonna go in the middle in the middle on my rear hub so on your rear hub you have three screw holes um, I'm right now I'm on the most inner I'm gonna go in the middle on the hub and then I'm gonna go on the very outside of the tower I think that's how I'm gonna run this so Let's get this put on, my car put back together. You guys will be able to see what it looks like with the, it on the car, which shouldn't be that surprising. I mean, you've probably seen it before. And uh, go order the shock tower. Link in the description below. I'll link the actual shock tower. I'll link the, I'll give you guys a coupon code. Go order this. This thing is awesome. Let's get to putting it back on, or get to putting it on. guys look at it it's pretty so a couple things I remember I told you guys I wrecked and I ended up busting this basically this camber link I busted it out from the shock tower uh, I told you guys I was gonna use flange nuts to hold that on there that way it couldn't come past the, the nut that holds on I'm talking about this piece right here let's see if I can get it that piece right there I was gonna use a flange nut to make sure that the camber link couldn't pop off that ball. Um, the flange nuts I had didn't fit, so what I did is I just got a washer like I did on my short course. So basically I have a washer to reinforce that nut and reinforce that uh, ball stud or ball link from co coming out. But the setup I'm running is I'm running all the way out on the tower. I'm gonna go ahead and exercise the fact that I got these extra holes on the tower. And then I'm running in the middle in the camber link, or in the hub. Probably thinking, why would you use shock tower if you're going to run it long anyways? Well, it's not longer. You can see that the camber's going to be way off. I'll set the camber after I get on the car. This is the setup uh, that Aaron Royston is running. He said he really likes it, so I trust his thoughts on that. It also gives me the ability, if I do need to loosen up the rear really more, I can go on the inside of the hub. I have a few. I have a tuning option there. I go outside. I can also go up and down on the tower, so that's what I'm doing on that shock tower. So I'm really happy with it, looks really good. I'm gonna put it back in my car here in a little bit and it's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna clean it up and then set the camber. But if you like this video, smash that like button, 
Make sure you guys subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and you guys will see me next time. Later, guys.